Hello there, Sid here, and welcome to the Drunken Orc. If you're a regular watcher of the War Bosses channel, which is a channel, a collaboration channel with myself, Clint from Essex Boys, Six Plus Stevo, Dreadwar Gaming, The Hobby Git, and Scania from Plastic Crack Gaming, then you'll know, or you may know, or you may remember, that about 10 months ago, back in last October, we had a video which discussed the best orc model for kit bashing. Now the winner of that was put up for public vote and came in as the battle wagon. So the battle wagon, the most expensive kit mentioned, so cheers for that, uh, was picked for each of the war bosses to get a kit and make something other than a battle wagon out of. Now that was 10 months ago, so obviously that competition is still very much underway. <laughs> <laughs> it's still ongoing. I've finished my entry, obviously. You know, being a bit of a boy. Uh, I believe Clint's got made some headway, as some of the others have, but we're, we haven't got an end date in sight for it. But since I've finished, I thought I'd do a few more, get a bit showboating and do a few more kits. You know, make the rest of them look like you should pull the fingers out. So I have, and this is one of those. This is, uh, it's basically, it's just another battle wagon, to be fair. This one's slightly veered off the rules. But I wanted a battle wagon that I could put uh, Garskull in the back of, since he can go in a battle wagon, and yet he does not fit in a battle wagon. So, model-wise, I mean. So this is a battle wagon that fits uh, Gazzy. I also wanted to get rid of the tracks and have a fully wheeled battle wagon. I wanted lots of wheels, and for that... Uh, I kid bashed it with uh, another model and there's a bit of plastic card work in it as well and a few third party pieces Toon Tanks make a bit of an appearance but anyway, there's no point whittering on about it you didn't come here just to listen to me gab on so let's have a look at the build I'm starting off with the Cardi B Ridge Hauler or whatever from uh, Nick Romunda I just like the fact it's got these eight wheels. Uh, I'm not too bored about the top bits, the, the actual cargo bit in the cabin. I'll use them for something later, of course, but for now, I just want the wheels and the bits to stick on. So there we go, I've built that up, just the very, very bottom, and that's gonna be uh, in place of the battle wagon's wheels and, of course, its tracks. See here as well, what I've done is I've glued a 25 millimeter base upside down onto the front coupling piece. Well, the reason I've done that is so when the battle wagon body sits into the wheels, it uh, is level. Otherwise, it had a tendency to tip forward a bit. There is the battle wagon body, so as you can see, I built up the main cab and I left the, the back bit attached as well, which has got like the engine compartment and what have you. But didn't build up the sides or expand the, the, the width of the back or anything like that. This is underneath. Uh, you can see there's a few uh, marks running sort of widthways across that. I believe they were there for the underside of the track assemblies to attach to just to make them more secure but as I didn't need them and they just got in the way I just cut those off with a model and so and sanded them flat now here I've got the front sort of jaw plate if you can call it jaw plate of, uh, of the battle wagon and I wanted to stick this on the front but obviously it's it's as wide as the cab but this had a wider wheelbase now so I needed to add some some width to it so I've done that with mud guards. Now it's just off a quite a heavy duty cardboard tube, you know, the type you'd send things through the post with, not the type you'd have toilet roll wrapped around. And I've used that, just cut a bit off and sort of glued that in place just to, to get that mud guard sort of effect. Since it was already curved, I mean, you could just use normal card and curve it yourself if you wanted, but you know, why have a dog and bark it yourself? I've also stuck a couple of rams at an angle on the front of this they are rams off i believe it's like the new imperial vehicle sprue but it was one of my mates suggested using it like um, a minesweeper and there's a, a particular minesweeper i don't remember the model of the actual tank but it's got these great big sort of prongs that stick out the front which almost plow up the earth and you know set off mines and they were basically just uh, glued on with <laughs> with as much glue and sprue goo as I could get just to hold them in place. It's not a it's not a pretty join, but it's uh, it's secure. And once it's uh, primed and painted up, it it does the job. And there it is mounted under the front of the battle wagon. So there's still a bit of wheel sticks out, but the mud guards do cover 
the majority of it and it did need that because without them the wheels were just essentially just sticking out on their own and you know a little bit vulnerable then once i've got the actual body of the battle wagon glued onto the wheelbase i need it to get the actual back of it sort of padded out so that's just bits of plastic card just just expanding the actual battle wagon body so it meets the wheelbase i also stuck a few bits of the battle wagon around the the back there you see just just starting to build the walls up a few bits of plastic rod as well and you can just see some marked out places on the <laughs> on the wheelbase and, and black sharpie and this is because i want the battle wagon to be able to fit out gasgill himself you also see i've put some plastic cards uh, around the battle wagon in a checker pattern that's what i do like doing me checkers like this it's dead easy to do you find the area you want to cover with the checkers you cut one strip of plastic card that's half the width of the area you want to cover and then you just cut that strip into squares and then just put them on staggered so that one strip covers the whole area it's dead easy and when it comes to painting it's a uh, absolute delight dead easy to paint the white and very easy to highlight it as well yeah it's the front of the battle wagon with the ram off now you can see a little sort of plastic diving board sticking out from under the battle wagon that is there to help position the ram because before i put that on when you attach the ram it sort of slumped forward quite a bit and i was keen on having the ram removable just in case i don't know it became necessary for whatever reason um so i put this little plastic tab on it basically just holds the ram up proud you know the level i want it straight forward and you can see on the ram itself the mud guards i started just putting a little bit of plastic card onto the cardboard itself just to clad it it's mostly half mil plastic card because you can bend that very easily and it was just strips and scraps basically just scattered about there's a couple of glyph plates on there as well i also wanted to give the battle wagon a turret now this is was done before they brought out the rules where battle wagons and lots of other units get everything you know you've seen the memes of the battle wagon from ninth which is a wagon with maybe a death roller and then the battle wagons from 10th they've got death rollers four shooters kill cannons wrecking balls grabber claws you know all the stuff you never bothered with before because it wasn't worth the point well this was done before that so i still like to put all the big shooters on and i also like to give a, a gun option as well and i'm going to use the big spiky ram as a death roller so you know and um, so anyway this is the turret i was going to use it is off a meng toon tank the panzer 3 it's a lovely little tank and uh, looking at the turret on the box of here you might notice that the gun is a little bit rubbish it's tiny and wee and looks ineffective so it needed a barrel upgrade so here's the turret mounted on top of the cab uh, with the the new barrel which is just the battle wagon main cannon normally when i do stuff like this i'll keep the old one because you'll never know when it's going to come in useful but the old one was so small and pathetic it would never come in useful so i didn't bother i nailed it to a frisbee and threw it over a rainbow and just in case i didn't want to run a big gun again because this was done in ninth and sometimes it wasn't worth the points i was going to use a 32 mil base to act as a blank just to stick on top of the turret mount if i wasn't going to run the big gun fits quite perfectly so there i filled up the bottom of the turret with sprue goo and glued a magnet in i think i might have done that the other way around actually i glued the magnet in then filled it up with sprue goo is just an extra bit of grab onto the magnet dishness if that's a word it's not a word and glued a magnet onto the main body and then that you can see inside the base there the blank is just a bit of plastic card just to lift the magnet to the right height to attach to the turret mount here it is again with the turret on at this point i've added the turret lid of part of the battle wagon with the big shooter there and from the sides, you can see that I've added the sides of the battle wagon, just the actual sides of the battle wagon as well, the normal sides. But I did have to cut one of the sides, which is actually a bit shorter than the other, just to extend it out. And then I've just plugged out with a couple of bits of plastic cord. Also popped the two battle wagon exhausts on the back, one in the usual place, and then just one on the other side. Also on the turret, I stuck a shooter barrel next to the main gun, just to act as like a coaxial big shooter. It's just a bit of barrel, so you know you can get away with that being a big shooter, no problem at all. I've done that with a lot of gun wagons back in the day. You know, the old Imperial Predators and Lehman Russ, you stick a turret on it, 
you've got a couple of side mounted big shooters one on the pintle mount for the commander where's your fourth one going stick it right alongside the main gun coaxial style there's a blank i couldn't just leave it a blank base so after i'd sanded it a bit just to take some of that you know very distinctive base texture off i cut a little skull glyph out of some plastic card and stuck that on which is a bit of a shame because i think it looks quite good but i'll probably not use it much since you get the big gun for free that's the other side as you can see i've left the door off i wanted to have the door open on it with an oak leading out and just above our door a little bit more sort of plastic card checkers anywhere i get a flat surface i'll put a few of these on maybe some dags but just something just to uh like i say break it up a bit and also it looks quite good it's also got a, a third exhaust on this side as well yeah there's a few more glyphs being added and i've put some more detail in the back as well uh, just zoom in here see if you can see it there's basically a ladder on the left hand side which i believe is off a bane blade kit and then in the right hand side in the corner there's a couple of gas canisters sort of strapped up there and that was off the i think that was off the uh, the cardi b ridge hauler i think maybe off someone else who knows here's the back now i wanted a boarding ramp on it uh something for the big lad himself to go up but one ramp didn't seem sufficient so i got two of the same ramps from the truck kits i cut the left hook off one and the right hook off the other and then just shaved down the the spike on the same side and uh, so it was like a half spike so it was level with the rest of the planking and then just stuck the two halves together to make a double width plank at some point on the, or somewhere on the the battle wagon i also stuck the two hooks i cut off i stuck those back on just as toe hooks or something i don't know there you go the ramps hinged at the back so it does go up and down and he has a couple of shots just to show that gaz does fit in the back quite comfortably he's even brought his rocks and soil from his base with him now just in case i didn't want to use the blank that also comes off and macari clips quite nicely into the top of the battle wagon as well i say it clips magnetizes now you can see i've started putting some rivets on the plastic card at the back you know they'll be from meng i say rivets they're nuts and bolts and also around the the blank spaces at the top i've put some dags do you like dags i like dags you can see here at the back there's those hooks i mentioned stuck to the bottom just like little tow hooks i don't think anything would actually be able to attach to them due to the exhaust and what have you but you don't really think like that do you uh if you notice as well at the top the hooks on the top of the ramp the boarding ramp i've actually moved those i've tilted them further back just cut them off drilled through put a pin in and then put the hooks back on so they're nice and secure and i've tilted them back to that angle so when it's on wheels as you can see it's on bricks at the minute or blue tack that's just for the pin but when it is on wheels and it's at the right height when that ramp goes down the hooks lie flat on the ground and the ramp touches the ground as opposed to it just resting on the tips of the hooks which just look wrong do you know what i mean so it does mean it's at a slightly steeper angle than it was but you know this is gaz he'd probably jump in anyway there's a turret i've stuck a couple of dags onto the additional armor shield around the turret and i've stuck a couple onto the top of the cannon as well also hanging underneath the turret something i love to put under my guns is the track armor from the battle wagon i think they're great as little pendants to, like orky pendants to hang under big cannons and shooters and what have you i've never used them as track armor far too valuable and also around that additional turret armor i've put some some glyphs and some checkers stuck some rivets around the base blank just to make it look a little bit more authentic and that is the orc i've got hanging out of the battle wagon door the door i said i was going to leave open it's basically an orc boy he's got i think he's got the waistcoat and uh, he's got a slugger and he's holding onto the inside and just leaning out taking pot shots there's a little bit of plastic card which i've put under his left foot that was just to get him um, to get the height right and his right arm is just a whittled spike because you can't fit a full arm in there so it's just it's hacked away to a stump basically and then just glued on the inside although at this point it's not glued because i did paint him separately that's the full ram finished just put some rivets on the plastic card on the wheel guards a couple of glyphs like i mentioned and a few more bits of plastic card 
just to patch up that ram a bit there's also a bit going over the center there which you can see just to well it's it's sort of covering a bit of a, an ugly join really here it is primed i've also dry brushed it a couple of shades of gray which is pretty much going to be the base color as it's a off one and uh, the boy's been painted and stuck into place. I think I've also done the metallics at this point, which is just painting the metal bits. Good metal and giving it a quick sort of black wash. And also white wall tires. Now these are very divisive. Some people love them, some people hate them. I love them, so I did them. If you don't like them, what I've found works is, if you raise your hand up in front of your face, you keep raising it up until you can't see them and then stop. And then just appreciate it like that take some of the sting out of it. There's a closer look at the York boy from a different angle. Obviously glued the door on as well, open behind him. To do that I just shaved the hinges on the door so the flat wasn't at 90 degrees, it was slightly angled and then that gives you a bigger surface area to glue it into place. And I think it's actually glued on his back as well with a little dub of super glue. I always like vehicles, whether they're um, tanks, wagons, trucks, cans, Death dreads, whatever, you know, all of it was stompers to have organic elements. And by that, I just mean people hanging onto it, hanging out of it, running about it. It just gives it a little bit more personality. And although I've done a few battle wagons, the only people I've had hanging out have been generally out of the turrets. So with this one, I wanted to make it a little bit more, you know, just do something a bit different. Hence that guy. And that's just it, sort of like I say base coated if you like from the other side uh, you can see that I've put a couple more bits and bobs on there's a little petrol can near the back of the walkway and there is a sledgehammer and shovel attached as well I love all these extra details on a vehicle which make it just seem more utility as opposed to just a straight up tool of war everything's designed for killing and nothing else you know, when you see a tank or an armoured car or a jeep or have you in real life, they've got tools, they've got ropes, they've got fuel canisters, they've got equipment which they need just for day-to-day -day operations, not just for straight up. We use this rope for strangling and this petrol can for setting bodies on fire. The shovel's for graves. It's not just that, it's, you know, it's more utilitarian than that. They're actually useful pieces of equipment, if that makes sense. It makes sense to me. I'm not going to take you through every single step of painting, I'm just going to show you, this is the right hand side of it painted. As you can see, I've basically left it the black colour, as it is essentially a, a goth wagon, since it's the big man's. Uh, there's a few hazard stripe panels being painted on there, and a few details like the checks and the dags have been picked out with white. The primary sort of signature colours, uh, as usual for my goth stuff, I do a lot of red panels and I do a lot of blue panels. Uh, the red panels are literally corn red, with a red wash and then I pick out some edge highlights with them with Evil Sun Scarlet and the blue is Vallejo Blue Green with a blue, generally a blue contrast wash I say contrast, I think it's actually it's High Lords Blue Speed Paint from Army Painter I water it down a little bit and then just pick out the edge highlights again with the Vallejo Blue Green with a dash of white in it does vary from vehicle to vehicle to be fair there's also an ultramarine panel on the back. Just got part of an ultramarine transfer on some, what do they call it? Some McCrag blue. Uh, just because I've got a mate who plays ultramarines, really. There it is from the front. Exactly the same as the side, just with the, the colour palette being picked out. A couple of checkered uh, all my panels painted as well. And the commander in the turret. I do love, I think if an orc's going to be in a turret with the big gun, he needs binoculars. And there's the other side much like the ones before. Stuck the toolbox on there, right in the centre, and there's another ultramarine panel. How fortuitous to find two scattered about with the big old U chapter markings on it and what have you. These really are lucky orcs indeed. And just for the sake of completeness, from the back. Uh, I don't think I mentioned before, the two bits of plastic cord which I used on the left and right to widen out the base of the, the back section, uh, obviously they were just blank bits of plastic card, or bits of plastic card as they're called. Um, I did have a lot of scraps left over, little off cuts, as well as some purpose cut, which I've put on there. And as you can see as well with the ramp when it's down, those hooks now sit flush on the ground as opposed to holding the ramp up. That is quite a steep boarding ramp. 
I'll be the first to admit that. But the big man, you manage that no problem. From the front angle, you can see the barrels on the side are painted green. I don't know why I paint my barrels green. I always paint my barrels green. I think it's because normally I paint them red, but I've already used quite a bit of red on vehicle models, so I don't want to, you know, have them just fade into the background. So a little bit of green just helps them pop a bit, because I tend to stay away from green on account of orc skin. You know what I mean? But if I do go green, I go uh, an even more brighter and vibrant green than I normally use. Quick shot of the turret on its own there. Doesn't look very effective on its own. It does need the battle wagon. Pretty crude hazard stripes on the dags on top of the gun and some brass work around it just to break it up a bit. And one final test fit without gas in the back. So that's that. There's the model. Like you say, turret turns around, comes off. Magnetized. Gun still goes up and down as well. Don't know why. Uh, you can pop Macari in the top. Gauss Gold fits sweetly in the back. Both sides. Oh, there's that loose. That's a bit loose. It was a bit stiff when I first done it. Uh, isn't it always? But now it's just gone all a bit floppy. Oh. So I don't know, I might just glue that in place, which would be a shame. Uh, I'll see if I can work some blue tack or something in there, maybe just to strengthen it up. And of course, if I don't want to use Macari or the turret, I have, oh, where it is, ha, <laughs> missed, a little turret blank. Which looks all right. So yeah. Me little shooter boy hanging out the side there. Anyway, it's good me going, look at this. But you don't really get to see it. So let's end with a quick montage of the battle wagon. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy the video, hit like and subscribe anyway. You know, why not? And uh, give the bell a little tickle so you don't miss any future vids. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks for watching. Take care now. Ta-da.